Hello and welcome back to this channel. What we're going to do today is we're going to make this. So in today's tutorial, we're going to go ahead and explore one of the newest features in Adobe Fresco that is the ability to control the opacity of the layers when you're working with animation. Okay, so Fresco released a bunch of new features just last week. I didn't want to make a typical new features in Fresco kind of video because, you know, it's boring. So I decided that I'm going to pick one of these features and do a video on that. And in the next video, maybe you'll see the other features. Okay, so are you guys ready? So let's just get started. Click on create new. Go to digital and current screen size. I have a color palette, a sketch and an image for you guys. So go ahead and download it from the link in the description box below. Once you have downloaded, let's go ahead and get them in Fresco. Click on your images. And if you have your images in photos, go ahead and bring it from there. So I'll go to my photos and I'll bring in the color palette. Click on done. Now click and hold to select that color and you can scribble on the artboard. Let's do the same for others. Now go ahead and hide it and hide the color palette as well. You can see all your colors under recents. Let's go ahead and bring in the sketch. Done. Now let's go ahead and bring in the image. Click on your photos again or images. I have mine in file, so I'm going to bring it from there. Click on done and I'm just going to go ahead and bring it up here and click on your transform again because I see that there's a white gap here. So go ahead and increase this by holding these corners and don't do here, but just the corners and click on done. So ideally, I would like this to have only the background and not these bulbs. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and fix it a little bit by going to my watercolor brushes into watercolor and watercolor wash flat. I will keep this at the highest possible setting, 512. I'm not going to worry about color. My water is also at highest. Now this is a touch shortcut. If you don't see it here, go to your settings and make sure you turn this on. Now double click so that the inner circle is highlighted. So what this means is now this brush has just water on it and not the color. So you don't have to worry about what color you are in. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and add this water over here. So this gets a little blurry. So I can't do that because this is an image. So I'm just going to uncheck that. Go to that layer which has the image. Click and click on convert to pixel layer. And now you can go to the watercolor brush. Double click and now add some water. So that this is a bit blurry here. See, it's not very evident. And don't worry, I know this image looks so weird right now. But once you have your bulbs in here, it really doesn't show up that much. Okay. All right. That looks good. Double click. Get out of it. Now let's go to the bulb layer and make sure you bring it on top of the other layer. Now let's go to settings. Click on multiply here so that the white background disappears. But now you see that you can barely see the sketch. That's it. And now go to the image layer. You can actually keep it like this itself. But since you guys cannot see what's happening, I'm going to hide the image layer and instead put on a new color layer. So plus so that there's a color. I'm going to go ahead and choose a color which is not in my artwork. Maybe dark red or something. Click on the fill tool and fill it in with vector. It can be pixel as well. We don't care about it because we are going to hide it. The only reason I have this is so that you guys can see what I'm doing on the screen. Click on a new layer because you want the artwork to be on top of that red layer. Don't make it on the red layer, by the way, because like I told you, we're going to hide it. So go to your pixel brushes and go into ink and Belgian comics. That's the brush we're going to use. And mine is set to 45 and I'm going to go ahead and make it as white. And my smoothing is at one and everything else is actually default setting. OK, and this is how you want your brush to be. And you know this pressure and little pressure. You're going to use those things as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make the outline of the bulb, but I'm not going to do it completely. You know what I mean? So I will just do it here. I'll put a bit pressure, not so much. See here like that and a bit of pressure. And then I'm going to put a little pressure over here. Let me do that properly. So I'm going to start from here. So this is the midpoint. I'm going to start somewhere here. And go ahead and do that like that. I'm going to put a bit of pressure. 
and then bring it in and stop here. So you can go ahead and hide the sketch and see how it looks if you like the curve or not. That's okay. And now over here, you can, by the way, use your two fingers to rotate it however you want. I'm going to start somewhere, not at the center, but a bit here. And then I'm going to go all the way till maybe here. So you can start off like this, maybe here, like that, and put a bit of pressure, and like this. Okay. That looks good, I guess. Let's see. Okay. That looks like a little bit of a, of a light bulb, right? Okay, great. Now what I'm going to do is go back to the sketch layer itself. So I'll start off from here and go towards this and then slowly move in like that. It should be a little bit subtle like that. Add a bit here like this. This should be okay. And now I'll go into my smoothing tool and I've set dry media and graphite and my size is set to 90. The strength is at 50. So if you want to increase or decrease the size, you can click and hold and you can type it in there. And now I'm going to go ahead and smudge this a little bit like this. Okay, I'm going to undo it by using my two finger tap. And I turned it around because I think I'm going to do it like this. I want to make sure that there's a bit of a gap. Let's go ahead and uncheck this sketch and see if it looks like a bulb. It's almost there. No problem. Cancel. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on a new layer. Don't worry about the bulb layer. You can make as many layers as you want. Now go ahead and click on black. Go to your Belgian comics. I'm going to go ahead and fill this in with black. I'm not going to make this texture which I've drawn um, because it's a little too much. And fill this in. I'm going to go here and bring it up a little bit. So it's a little grayish and I'm going to make this gray. Make sure you join these edges here nicely. Okay, let me erase this. All right, now that's done, click on a new layer. Click on your clipping mask because we're going to add some shadows to it. So go ahead and choose white, go to your pixel brushes and let's go into basic and soft round opacity. And my setting is at 539 and the opacity is or flow is 100. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this a little bit, maybe about 130s. Yeah, that should be good. And I'm going to add a bit here and a bit on the side and one line like this. So let me tell you what I did. I added, I'm going to use a vector brush so that I have a new layer. So I'm going to add shadows over here, over here, and then tiny bit here. Okay, nothing more than that. So let's do that. And I didn't put a lot of pressure if you noticed, right? So that is ready as well. Now I'm going to click on a new layer. I have to draw this thing inside. So go ahead and click on your black and then you can actually go back to recent and you'll have your pixel brushes already there. So click there and I'm just going to draw a thing like this. Don't worry too much about these things because they usually get hidden. And now let's go ahead and hide our sketch and your bulb is ready. Okay, so it's time to go ahead and move on to other things. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to group everything that makes the bulb. So you're already in that layer. So click and select multiple. That's right here. And I'm going to click everything that makes the bulb, including the clipping mask. And then click on this folder here. Now that's a group. Now I'll go there, click and click on duplicate layer group. You can actually merge it as well if you want. Now let's go here and click on transform tool. And I'm going to go ahead and rotate it like this. Oh, well, this looks nice. And I'll keep somewhere here. You can reduce the size. Always make sure you use the corner ones, not anywhere else. And click on done. So I'll go back here and I will actually hide the original one because I don't want it anymore. But I don't want to modify my original thing in case I want to use it for something else. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this one here. Click and duplicate layer group. Click and bring it here or wherever you want. 
maybe here and click on done now duplicate click go ahead and put it here a bit higher up i guess you know what i actually want to make it a little smaller i think it's too big maybe we could have put four okay or maybe three is okay as well oh no it will be nicer if it's this big right so okay i'm just going to click on done and i'm going to delete the other two click and or maybe we can just hide it okay this one actually i'm going to go ahead and merge this one let's click and merge layers in the group because then it becomes easier and i think it works well if it is like that in animation click and duplicate layer click on your transform tool and make sure you put one here done click duplicate layer transform tool and bring it up here done duplicate layer transform tool and bring one here uh, i just want this to be a little bit down here click on done and i want this so you can actually click on your transform tool and click on layers to figure out which one you want to work with okay now you can merge these four layers if you want to well, why not let's go ahead and do it if you're sure that this is how you want these to be placed go ahead and merge it so go ahead and select multiple let's select all the bulbs and then click and merge selected that they are all in one single layer now now you are in your brush belgium comics so go ahead and make one line like this you can make it on the same layer or you can do on a different layer as well it's up to you okay so that's ready as well now let's go ahead and add some glow and animate these things so click on a new layer and i want all the layers to be below the bulb layer because um, i think that looks nicer so you can either click and bring it down or just go to a layer below the bulb layer and click on plus now let's go ahead and select the light yellow and we have to go into soft round opacity and i'm going to increase this a little bit maybe 200 270 okay that is not enough for 300 okay that looks good 346 so i'm going to go ahead and add a yellow round thingy here now click on a new layer now i will go into this second yellow that i have that is 1500 100 and mine is at 346 so i'm going to go ahead and add a bit like that you can actually bring this layer below if you want that white to show up so i'm just going to go ahead and add that to this like this you can make your lights as bright or however you want by the way and then you can go ahead and go to this darker yellow or you can choose the lighter yellow itself it's just slight difference and without putting much pressure i'm going to put very little pressure and make a round around so what i'm doing is i'm just making a round around this but with very light pressure so go ahead and do that okay i'm in the right layer i'm going to go ahead and add slight bit of yellow around these things i don't think you can even see that but there's definitely some yellow happening just to show that it's brighter okay that's good now it's time to animate this thing so let's go ahead and do that so i'm going to go ahead and do the yellow thing first if you haven't watched any of my animation video tutorials don't worry it's okay uh, you can still follow this tutorial and work with it but if you would like to go ahead and check out my intro to animation video it is super awesome and super helpful for people who are absolutely new to this uh, but don't worry we can still work with it so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on this animation panel right here and this shows up so what i'm going to do in this animation is i've decided that the number of frames is going to be around 12 and i'll explain in a bit why but it's not necessary that you have to stick to 12 you can make it um, more as well and uh, the more the frames the better your animation is going to be but since i'm a lazy person and i want to keep this tutorial short so we're going to stick to 12 and since we're going to make 12 frames in one of these layers we're going to make the same thing like 12 frames for all other things that we're going to animate as well and um, i'm not going to dwell into why i'm going to do this if you want why please check out my intro video i've explained everything in detail now let's go ahead and uh, click and this is the new feature that we are talking about and that is frame opacity so because of this feature this animation that we are doing right now becomes much more easier and you know fun to create as well so, okay so i'm going to keep the first frame at zero opacity perfect now click and duplicate frame 
and click and I'm going to change this to 10. When I say 10, I don't mean exactly 10 because it's sometimes difficult to control it. Anywhere somewhere closer to 10. Now click and duplicate frame and now we're going to keep it 20. Click duplicate frame and we're going to keep this 30. Click duplicate frame 40. When it's frame number 5, it's 40. Now frame number 6 is going to be 50 and so on. This one will be 60. This is going to be 70. This is going to be 80. This is going to be 90. And this is going to be 100. And the 12th frame is just a duplicate frame and we're going to keep it at 100. So now if you play, okay, it's too fast. Let's go to settings and let's reduce this to about 8 or 9, I guess. Let's see. Okay, this is too slow probably. Okay, but 10. Okay, that's cool. And you see what's happening here? We didn't do a lot of work. We just reduced and increased the opacity and then we have a glowy effect over here. So we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing to the other layer, that is this yellow layer. So this one, I'm going to keep the frame opacity to zero. Duplicate frame, and this is going to be 10. Next is going to be 20. Let's do that till the end. Let's play now. You don't have to change the frame setting because once you set the frame setting to one of the layers, it applies to everything else. So, okay, so that's done too. And now let's go ahead and hide this red layer. And where's our image, by the way? I'm going to click till it gets highlighted. I'm going to bring it all the way down below the bulb and do it like this. Now again, I'm going to do the same thing here. That is, make it completely zero and then duplicate and 10. Let's do the same thing. Okay, so this is what happens, but wait a minute, we are not done yet. So click on a new layer that is right above the red layer, by the way, and make sure you go to black, go to your fill tool and fill it with vector or pixel, doesn't matter. Okay, so now it looks like this and let's play all. And there you go, you have a very beautiful scene that you have created just now. And this is set to loop. So if you want this to look better, what you can do is um, you can actually go ahead and go into setting, click and click on boom rank. And let's go back and then click here and play all and see what happens. It creates a beautiful, beautiful thing. OK, so once you're ready to export it, you can click on share, go to publish and export motion and you can use automatic. That's better and generate frames. And then it's going to create a file for you like this and then you can export it. Let me click on done. So that's it. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. And I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that like button and the subscribe button and the notification bell. If you want to support this channel, you can click on that super thanks button right below this video. Or you can also support this channel by buying me a coffee on Kofi.com. You can find the link to do that in the description box below. If you do create something using one of my tutorials, please tag me on Instagram as print me some color or think beyond color. If you're not going to post it publicly, at least send me a DM on Instagram. I would love to check out what you guys create. If you have any questions, comments, requests, don't forget to hesitate to leave a comment here or you can also email me. You can find the email ID in the about section of the YouTube channel. And uh, I guess that's it. I'll see you in the next video then. Bye bye.